So here's our newly acquired Gerstner tool chest or new to me tool chest that we picked up there in Ohio. I just wanted to give you kind of an overall shot of what it looks like on the outside here. You can see that it's in really good condition. It's got a little bit of aging to it, which gives it really beautiful character. That's one of the things that we love about the older Gerstner tool chests is that they have some history to them. If you look a little closer to the corners, the handles and the latches, you can see it's got a little bit of surface rust, which is perfectly okay. I don't plan on doing any restoration of this box. It's gonna stay just as it is, and we're just gonna use it. So I'm gonna set you up on the, uh, the tripod, and we're gonna go into this and uh, check out what's left in the drawers and uh, see if we can learn a little bit about the uh, history of Mr. Gillespie. And I believe that's the proper way to pronounce his last name is Gillespie. And I apologize if I got that wrong, uh, no disrespect, but the, uh, according to the, the documents I found in here, this belonged to a Mr. Bob Gillespie. So let's just start at the top and we'll work our way down. Look how beautiful that is. So I will point out that this, the top box was refelted. The, uh, the riser box uh, looks like the felt has faded quite a bit. So no idea if the original owner refelted this or someone after uh, Mr. Gillespie uh, refelted it. I, I have no idea, but this is kind of fresh here. I'm gonna go ahead and let's open up the front cover. Move that down. I just didn't want that to uh, fall while we're going through the, the tool chest there. So right here in the top, I want to start with this guy. We have a, a fractional or a, a decimal equivalent chart, I mean. And look at this. It's, uh, you know, this was from Gerstner. So this must have been included with the tool chest whenever this was purchased. Fantastic right there. I want to make sure that we you know, preserve this and we don't get it dirty and messy and just kind of leave it like it is right there. All right, I'm just gonna move this off to the side right here. It did come with a, uh, a key for the, for the box right here. So we've got the key and I believe, yeah, the key is actually in the, in the envelope there. So we got the keys. There's a couple of little pieces of material right up here in the top. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, here's a six inch rule and that looks like a Starrett. I believe that's a stair, but no, it's not. I'm sorry, this is a union. Union tool rule is just a piece of aluminum. And then we also have this gauge right here. It's uh, also used as a, a protractor angle finder there as well. So that must have been Mr. Gillespie. So I'm gonna just put those right back in there. And then, so these were put together just like you see right here and uh, put in the top of the box. So on this standard tool company uh, decimal equivalent chart, or tap drill chart, I'm sorry, it's got Bob Gillespie right here at the top. So that had to have been his. Let's go ahead and see what else is in this. I haven't been through this uh, stack of charts and papers right here. So we have the uh, decimal chart, the tap drill chart with uh, Mr. Gillespie's name on it. Here we have a Starrett decimal chart that's got metric, the metric conversion chart right there. All right. And then we have, let's see what this is. Let me go ahead and show you this. This is another uh, tap drill chart right here. Sacramento Engineering and Machine Works. It's got uh, keyway dimensions on there, Woodruff key dimensions, and a tap drill chart. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen one of those like that before. All right, I'm gonna set that in there measuring and layout tools this is something that looks like he printed out and was uh and was using number gauges so it's a wire gauge chart there and let's see what this is here some old old prints right here now looks like this could be a blueprint there's just a chart general information on rivets screw sizes the depths, that must be, uh, I think that's the depths there. Radii, so a lot of different, I don't wanna go through every single one, it's gonna take up a lot of time, but you, you can see here, we've got just a lot of uh, good, useful information. This is uh, radius information right there. Look at that, 
trig tables. So cool stuff right there. Let me go ahead. I'm going to put this back together and then uh, bring you guys right back. All right, working our way down onto the chest itself. Uh, so start off, this is a model number 062. All right, and you can see we've got a little bit of uh, wear on it, aging from coming up and you know oily hands touching it. That's what gives it character. This model right here has got two of these larger drawers that is to be used for machinery's handbooks or the like. All right, but I'm gonna start with this drawer here. He had um, Velcro here, so he must have had something attached. Um, I'm not sure what that could be, but this was one of the drawers that I actually pulled out when I was inspecting this toolbox. So if we pull this out and you look in here and you see, there's his name tag right there. Robert Gillespie for Laser Plane Corporation. I'm assuming this is where he probably worked for a long period of time and maybe he, uh, you know, retired working at this place right there. I'm going to set this down. Uh, so we've got Mr. Gillespie's name tag. And that goes with the, uh, the, the decimal chart right there, Bob Gillespie. So maybe he, uh, his name was Robert, but maybe he just went by Bob. That's what we're going to assume there. There was this uh, angle plate in there. So maybe this was a tool that he made himself that he used. All right. And then we've also got, there it is, Bob Gillespie, model maker, spectra of physics, laser plane, Dayton, Ohio. That's cool. And then we've got one more piece of the puzzle in here too. Orange Coast College identification card. I believe this was for a uh, library. So it's just a library card. And dated spring 1965. That is cool. A little bit of history for uh, Mr. Gillespie right there. And then there was a little post-it note. That was all that's in there. So like I said, I'm planning on keeping all this stuff and it's going to be a part of this box. It's going to stay with this box. So um, we, we just kind of preserve the, uh, the past and the history of uh, the original owner with that. Okay. So I'm going to put that back in there. Well, let's just kind of go through the drawers and see uh, what's in here because I did not open all these up. We're just going to start on this side and there's your there's your mirror right there. This was probably the original mirror that was on the, uh, on the box. So someone saved that. And so this is drawer right here is made for uh, taps or cutters. And I'm not sure what these guys are. Let's see. It looks like a, uh, looks like it might be a light. I'm not sure, not sure what that is, but I don't want to, um, spend too much time on all the fine details. There is another mirror right there. So I don't know why there would be two. Have no idea and I don't know which one's the original now, but at least we got those. Another drawer with some tools in it. This looks like we got a compass. Yep, got a couple of uh, compass in this one here. An easy out. And it looks like a keys in there as well. We're gonna come over here to this side this one is empty, but you can see all these drawers are moving nice and easy. There's another drawer that you use for uh, cutters uh, or drills or even pens, things like that. And then here's a full drawer full of uh, pencils and pens and writing utensils. Pretty cool. This one is empty. Our other drawer right here for machinery's handbooks. Now this is a, uh, a larger, this is a larger drawer, a longer one, I'm sorry. No, I'm wrong. Okay, I thought it was longer, so they're the same length, but there's more information in here, um, charts and things like that, that were original to the box. Got some more, several uh, tap drill charts in here. This is one of those dial gauges. Look at this. You usually never see them this clean, so there's probably all the literature in there that t tells you how to, tells you how to use this. So it's a little trig calculator. It's got these little dials that you can turn that gives you the formula and the, uh, the information that you're looking for right there. That's pretty cool. I like that it's been preserved in its, um, in its envelope and just we'll keep all this stuff together. I'll kind of organize this once, we, uh, once I start putting my tools in here to uh, kind of keep them all together. All right, we have our long drawers right there. This one's got 
it looks like uh, this is that's got a decal product sticker on there. So this is a T-slot cleaner. Here you can see you've got Bob's name on some of these right here. So these were different shims and parallels, uh, a real common real common tools and materials that you find in all these older boxes right here. Dental floss. Look at that. Jim's Coney Island. That's pretty cool. This is something that's got a little gear on the end of it. So just some, and some more random stuff. All right. We got our lower box here. I'm not sure what these were used for. It looks like a, you know, some type of drill where you're drilling into a piece of material by hand, but there's two of those. I thought maybe these were used for uh, packing, but I'm not really sure. He's got one of the, is this a rule? Yep. So here's a, one of those thin uh, flexible rules right here. It's like a um, 18 inch flexible rule. I was looking for the maker. I don't see a maker. I may be just missing it because I'm trying to hurry through this. But it says spring steel tempered and in West Germany over here. All right, and you can see that it has been well used in the uh, cardboard or the tape, whatever that is, to protect it. There's some kind of gauge in this guy right here. Uh, it looks like a, a air pressure gauge, but actually I don't know what kind of gauge that is. Mesco is the maker. So that's the um, that's the top box there. So let's go ahead and check the uh, the bottom here for the uh, Gerstner stamp. All right. So a lot of you guys know this. But, uh, for those that don't, if you want to check, make sure that these are a true Gerstner box. You always pull the lower drawer and look in the bottom, and that and it should have a stamp there from Gerstner whenever they manufactured these. So go ahead and pull the cover out like that. Now I'm going to hold on to this because I don't have a way to hold that. But go ahead and take your lower drawer. And we're going to pull this guy out and I'm going to carefully set it up here out of the way and you should be able to see down inside there, there's your stamp. Built by H. Gerstner and Sons, Dayton, Ohio. And that looks like, I'm not sure what that symbol is. It kind of looks like a letter H and it says number 379 right there as well. All right. And I don't see anything in there except for a little wooden stick there. So it looks good. You know, that reminded me, we need to look behind the drawers here to see if there's anything behind the small drawers. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this back together and we'll move on. I wanna see, yep, there is, that looks like a metal decimal chart in the back back there. So one of the one of the things about this model that I'm not aware of, there's two slots in the top of the box that go down and it looks like it's to stand some things up and I'm not sure the, the exact purpose of that. So I'm going to have to find out what that is. So we definitely got a, a decimal chart back there that's in the bottom. Let's look over here on this side. I'm going to pull this one out, set it over there. And sure enough, there's some things in there. Let me let me see if I can get you a shot of that. There's some keys. Yeah, there's some keys back there. And then over here on this side, yeah, it's a decimal chart back there. I'm sorry about the glare. I was just trying to show you. So I need to see if I can reach down in there and uh, grab some of that stuff. All right, I got, I got my uh, Duresta ice pick. Let's see if I can... All right, so there's a key right there. The Eagle Rock Company. Huh. All right, we got another key. Looks like there's another key back here. It's a couple of them. Master lock keys. What is this one right here? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a Gerstner and Sons uh, keychain. 1906, a tradition of excellence, 2006. So they must have made these in 2006 right there for uh, their 100 year anniversary. That is cool. That is awesome. So these must have just been some personal keys for some other locks that uh, Mr. Gillespie had. So I want to see if I can get that decimal chart out of there now.
I just went ahead and took all those drawers out so I could reach in there and see if I can tilt it up without damaging anything. Get my finger, there it is, okay, got it. There it is. And it's a general brand. It's got GIL up there at the top, so you can definitely tell it was Mr. Gillespie's. So always uh, good stuff to do whenever, if you, if you buy these old toolboxes, pull the drawers, look behind them, because there's definitely things that fall down in there, like this stuff right here. Very cool. All right, we're gonna move down to the lower chest, which is uh, also considered a riser. Uh, I got the key, I've already unlocked it, so we're just gonna go ahead and open this up, the uh, cover there to reveal that. And you can see the older red felt here. And I just wanna point out what a great fit that cover is. It's almost like, it, it's almost like it cushions going in for the air coming out the side of it there. So we're gonna pull that guy out. Let's, uh, we'll start with the, the bottom drawer right there. Again, you can tell that the felt is original in this, in this box right there and that it's, uh, it's a little bit faded. And we've got six more drawers here. Just some, uh, I'm not sure, just some random stuff, little pieces of wood. This could have been pieces of the toolbox at some point. That one's empty, got a piece of shim in there. This one's empty. I think these are all empty down here. So yes, so all those drawers are empty, but it's nice having that riser with more uh, room down, especially this larger uh, drawer here so that you can put taller items in there. So again, let's go ahead and inspect the bottom to uh, see the stamp in here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower drawer and we'll get this out of the way. Set it over here without damaging anything. All right, and then yes, we've got a stamp up in there. So I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe these, I'm not gonna assume that. I was thinking that maybe these were built two different time periods, that he purchased them at different times because the stamp looks different here. But let me move you down so you guys can see this a little bit better. All right, we'll just go handheld here so maybe you guys can get in here and see that. So there's your stamp in the center, Gerstner Sons, Dayton, Ohio. It's got a C and then a number 252 and then a lot number, number 66178. And I just noticed this. Do you see it yet? There's Mr. Gillespie's name he wrote in there in the, in the box, Bob Gillespie. That is cool. I wish that he would have put a date on there. My other Gerstner tool chest also has a uh, name and I believe a date written in there as well. But uh, it's nice having a signature in there. So I think what I should do really is, uh, since I'm the owner of this box now, I think I'm gonna put my name in there and put the date down in the bottom. We'll do both the, uh, the bottom and the top chest there to kind of to kind of mark it. But anyway, that's always really cool. So anytime, anytime you uh, discover one of these tool chests here, it's always fun to go into the bottom and see if there's a name written in there and make sure that the stamp is in there to make sure that it is an authentic Gerstner tool chest. So something else to make note of for the uh, Gerstner tool chest, you know, we have, so down here we have our number 252 that's handwritten in there. And if you pull the drawers, on the rear of the drawer, you'll also have a corresponding number, 252-2. So what this is, these numbers are indicating the uh, drawer number that they're working on. And we've got a great video on the channel of the factory tour, so be sure to check that out. They go into more detail about you know hand fitting these drawers, but they're all hand fitted so that they have the proper uh, clearance and tolerance that they want for these to fit in. But we'll pull like another one over here and we'll look behind it and see the 252.6. So all these drawers are gonna have a 252 lot number and then another number next to it, which indicates uh, whichever drawer they're working on. So I don't know the order that they put them in, if they go maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six. But anyway, it's just something else to look out for whenever you're uh, checking out these toolboxes. And I can't remember what this one says, but let's look real quick. So this one is a 379, and then we flip this around. You can see the 379 and the letter H there. But I'm gonna put this in and just pull one more just for reference here. We'll pull this drawer right here. 
379.8, so indicating one of the drawer numbers there. Very cool. All right, guys, I'm, I'm set up here. I want to go ahead and uh, put my uh, John Hancock in here and uh, sign it and actually date it. And uh, apologize if there's excessive noise outside. The guys are doing the lawn care right now, um, right in the middle of uh, filming the, the toolbox tour. So Mr. Gillespie's name is over here on this side. And I was trying to think, should I just go underneath his name or go over here? And I think I want to put mine on the opposite side of the box here. So I'm just going to put my name. We'll put A-Bomb 79 in today's date, okay? So here we go. I tested this on some wood. Not a lot of room in here to, uh, to do this, actually. Keep clicking it off. All right, and then uh, today's date is July the 26th. We're going to put um, two thousand twenty two. There we go. All right, let me get you guys a little closer shot of that. I don't have the uh, prettiest handwriting or signature, but there it is right there. We've got her marked with my name, YouTube channel, and today's date. So hopefully one day in the future, somebody's going to have fun discovering that and show a little bit of the uh, history of the previous owner of the tool chest. So I decided I want to go ahead and put my name up in the uh, the top box there as well. Unfortunately, Mr. Gillespie did not sign this box. I have not found his signature anywhere in here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and add the uh, the OA bomb signature. So let's just repeat what we just did. Adam Booth, we're going to put our I just messed up right there. I put a D instead of a B. <laughs> I don't know if I can fix that now. All right, so because I'm using a pen and I can't erase my mistake right there, we're gonna, I'm just gonna put a cross through here like that and I'll go next to it. A-bomb 79. That is a mistake I've made many times, by the way, instead of a a B, I would write a D. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our, our date. And today was the 26th, July 26th, 2022. There we go. There it is. My signature, the dumb mistake, and the date. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's going to conclude our uh, toolbox tour of our new to us uh, Gerstner tool chest. And I, I want to point out that you guys probably saw it in video, but I, I realized after that last clip that I actually wrote my A-bomb wrong in the bottom box there as well. Uh, I feel like a complete idiot doing that on, on video. It's embarrassing, but there's no way to hide that or, or fix it, you know, because I was using an ink pen there. So I went back into the bottom one. I just drew one line through um, where I had written what I did and I put A-bomb 79 underneath that. What really gets me is that when I try to do a signature or a, you know, like a, an autograph there where, it's, where I try to write A-bomb 79, my mind has written A-D-A-M, my name, countless times throughout my life. And when I go to write a bomb, A B O M. My mind is thinking a D instead of a B. So I have done that so many times, where I write the wrong letters there, and there's nothing I can do about it other than just you know just continue to go forward. So instead of trying to erase it or do anything to change it, I just left the mistake there. 
it's on video. You guys will be able to see this forever. And I just simply just did the one line through it and then did it again. So I hate that, but at least I got my signature in the box and we've got a date there. So uh, folks in the future that go into that and um, they'll, they'll be able to see that I was the owner of this box or, or at least a name in there anyway, because we don't know what this YouTube thing is going to do over the next uh, several decades, you know. But anyway, I, I had a lot of fun finding and acquiring this tool chest, bringing it home, and I look forward to having this. And we're going to, I'm not sure where I'm going to set it up yet. I thought about putting it over there on our new, that aluminum box that I made over the water fountain. I'm thinking about setting it up over there. It's just going to be kind of high. It's, it's going to be higher than this. Um, so I haven't decided yet. The other thing that I'm, that I'm thinking about doing is uh, maybe uh, either trying to find or even purchase new from Gerstner the actual roll around uh, tool chest that these are designed to sit on. So they do have, they have the full toolbox that rolls around. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up trying to look for is a bottom chest, but you know, those are gonna be hard to find. And if I can't find that, I'm just gonna uh, get with Gerstner and see about purchasing one for this uh, tool chest here and just have a complete unit here for the, uh, for the shop. But I think that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun showing you um, this box and the history from uh, the previous owner, Mr. Gillespie. And it's such an honor that, that they left some of his you know, stuff in this tool chest here that he used that's got his name on it, got a couple tools in there that was his, and those are just gonna stay with this box. And I'm gonna start working on putting some of my personal tools in this box and try to get it organized. And uh, I would like this box to be the one where I go to for when I'm using my small gauges, like for example, thread pitch gauges or my rules, calipers, smaller micrometers, all that kind of stuff is gonna be in this box right here. And uh, I'm sure one of these days, I'm going to be gone and this is going to get passed down to the next person in line and maybe all those tools will be in there whenever the next person gets it as well. So I hope you enjoyed and um, thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching these videos. I have fun showing this kind of stuff with my audience and bringing it to you on the channel and um, we'll see you again real soon.